I'm not gonna lie, this feels a little weird. I actually promised myself for the longest time I wasn't gonna let's play any Metroid game. And that might seem weird because I love the series. I love Metroid a ton. And this also isn't the first Metroid video that's been on this channel. We did Super Metroid Meta and Omega boss battles way back in like 2008, and we did a full Let's Play on TRG. But during both of those, I really didn't feel like it was what I wanted, if that makes sense. The whole point of the TRG one was to teach Emil how to play through the game. And with Meta and Omega boss battles, it was just the boss fights, and I wasn't really that good at the game, to be perfectly honest. Looking back at it, back at it now, it kind of stings a bit, but also, it's looking back at videos you made 12 plus years ago. What are you gonna do, right? So, because of Metroid Dread coming out in a couple weeks as of this recording date, this is being recorded September 17th, 2021, and because I've gotten really into Metroid and Zelda 3 randomizers, the combo randomizers of Super Metroid and Zelda 3, I've been playing this game a lot, and I feel I've gotten to a point where I feel I can comfortably show it off the way I want. Because I've always wanted to show off speedrunning tricks, because this is probably one of the most games that's been speedrun. Like, this is one of the most speedrunnable games. It has so many secrets, so many tricks, and honestly, it's also the creation of a bunch of speedrunning sites like Speed Demo Archives. So, it's kind of a holy grail in a way, one that I've always been scared of touching in full. But, I think if I'm gonna do it, now is the time. This is the easiest Metroid to get into at this point, because you can play it on the Switch, it's on the Switch Online service, but all the other ones are kind of harder to access, so if you want to play along as well, this is the easiest one to do it with. This is the one I grew up with as a child, that and Fusion, but uh, this one's got a special place in my heart. So what we're going to do in this playthrough is we're going to do a 100% run of the game. But I'm also going to try some speedrun tricks. The thing I love about this game is that they designed it in a way that there's speedrunning tricks that the game teaches you, and there's speedrunning tricks that people have figured out since. And a combination of both is how I like playing the game. But I'm going to also at the same time try to show off the actual non-trick way that they want you to go through the game. So I'm going to do both, and it's going to be tricky. I'm going to do my best. Hopefully you enjoy it. Because I would like this to be something cool for people to, their first time experiencing a Metroid game, to try to play along and try, but also to see the potential of other things you can do in the game. This game has gotten me into paying attention to speedruns a lot more. Anytime this comes up in a GDQ, I love watching the Super Metroid segments, and honestly, it's just a really, really cool and well put together game. Even if it can be broken to absolute pieces. So I've already changed my control settings. These are the controls I prefer. Shot for Y, Jump for B, Dash for A, Item Select for X, Item can't uh, sorry, uh, yeah, Item Cancel as the Select button and leave the angles the same. The defaults are a little different. Shot is X, Jump is A, Dash is B, Item Select is Select, and Item Cancel is Y. Essentially, I just rotated the buttons a little bit, swapped them around. It's not a big deal. You can play however you want. This is my preference. And there's also the special setting mode here as well, where you can do icon canceling, where if you set it to auto, anytime you walk through a door, if you have an item equipped like missiles or super missiles, it'll automatically turn them off when you get in the new room. Or manual, which is the default, which is you press a button to turn it off. Moonwalk as well is kind of neat. You can shoot and basically strafe. You'll be firing the same direction. You can walk backwards. It looks cool. I don't prefer it. I like being able to turn on a dime basically while shooting, so. That's the settings for that. How about we get to the actual story? Let's kick it off. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. As a kid, that was probably the first time I ever heard actual spoken dialogue in a video game. And that just blew my mind at the time. It seems so weird now, and we kind of take it for granted for the most part, but 
like being nine and seeing that and hearing that? Coolest stuff. The first battle of the Metroids on planet Zebus. It was there that I foiled the plans of the space pirate leader Mother Brain to use the creatures to attack galactic civilization. I was hit by SpaghettiOs, but I warmed her up with missiles. It definitely worked. I next fought the Metroids on their home world, SR388. I completely eradicated them, except for a larva, which after hatching, followed me like a confused child. Dot, dot, dot. It's the baby. Everyone's favorite Metroid character, the baby. I feel bad because it's become such a meme because of Other M, but it's kind of a touching moment in a way. I personally delivered it to the Galactic Research Station at Sarah so scientists could study its energy producing qualities. I put the baby in a tube and gave it away. I was a really bad mother, but I had six shoulder pads. The scientists' findings were astounding. They discovered that, all right, I can't actually speed up the text in this one. They discovered that the powers of the Metroid might be harnessed for the good of civilization. Here they are, harnessing it for the good of civilization. Satisfied that all was well, I left the station to seek a new bounty to hunt. But I'd hardly gone beyond the asteroid belt when it picked up a distress signal. Sarest so Station was under attack! I look very concerned in that portrait, as you can tell. Space Colony. We're not calling it Ceres Station, even though it literally said that, or Ceres, however you say it. But here, we take the elevator down, and now we're Samus Aran! We can flip! We can shoot! We can aim our gun everywhere! We can even dance. A lovely dance. I, I already kind of showed you the controls, but we'll state it again. At least this is how I have it mapped. These are not default controls. B to jump. If you jump in place, you'll aim around just left and right properly. If you're moving when you jump, you'll do a nice spin jump. A to run. And yes, you can actually run now. It's just not as fast as you can get later on in the game. Shoulder buttons to aim up and down with your shots. Together, aim straight up or just hold up and shoot. Why is shoot? Right now, just holding down fires. That's it. Don't have any items to equip? Don't even have a pause menu we can go to at the moment, so let's just run through the station. This nice, quiet station that I'm sure absolutely nothing is going wrong in, and oh. I I'm gonna leave. Ah, fine. So as you've noticed, this is the actual title screen to the game, but something is missing. It's Samus. She's supposed to be hovering in the middle, clearly. Let's just ignore the bodies. Let's pay no mind to them. Run through some more rooms. And we found the baby. Oh, you're perfectly fine, buddy. All right, I'm gonna take you home, okay? Just can't tell why this door's locked, though. <gasps> it's Ridley! One of the main antagonists of Metroid. Say hello to Ridley. This fight is basically optional. You've got two things you can do here. One is you can take damage to get yourself down to 30 hit points. That will end the fight immediately. The other option is hit Ridley 100 times. Ridley's patterns are somewhat random. So you may find yourself just kind of confused what's going on here. Or in my case, if you saw the stream I did of this a while back, uh, Ridley will just get stuck in the floor and become invincible. So that's also apparently a possible strategy. If you want to do this and you're trying to at least abuse iframes, the fireballs are the things that do the least amount of damage to you, so that's your best bet if you want to just kind of doing that. Uh, if you just want to kind of clip damage like that and try to avoid the tail, because the tail is what does the most damage. Or you can just get him in a weird loop like this where he just does the same thing over and over and just makes your life way easier. Ooh, this is nice. We might cut this a little close here. But once you get 100 shots on him, really should drop the baby. Uh-oh, we are cutting this a little too, there we go, perfect, we got it. All right, get out of here, Ridley. Obviously that is way slower than the actual option of just running headfirst into Ridley, but it's more for bragging rights. 
Emergency self-destruct sequence activated. Evacuate colony immediately. Yet again, Samus is in something that is about to explode. I know this is only the third game of the series, but man, it's weird that it's happened so many times at this point. Just run through, nothing can damage you. The only way to die at this point is straight up not making it to the end in time. The steam just stuns you to stop you from running. Same with the blocks, they just stun you as well. You have plenty of time. It's here though where it gets a little weird because you have to jump up while the screen is tilting and these little steam jets can actually knock you back down. But this is a cool opening sequence. Stand on the elevator and you're done. That's the game. Baby's kidnap. Space colony's blown up. End the game. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I don't know why I was so worried about this. All right, fine. Fine. Zebus, time for the actual, the actual game. We go back to the planet that Metroid 1 takes place on. And I believe it is Zebus, because uh, I think the only time in the series they say the name is in Metroid Other M. Planet Zebus. And I believe it's pronounced like that. I used to say Zebus, Zebes, Zebs, a lot of different names. Zebus, I think, is what I've kind of settled on now. But uh, don't ever be bothered by saying it any other way. Welcome to Zebus, and welcome to our opening area of Criteria. Now we finally have a pause menu we can look at. We have our very detailed map of a straight line down. Good start. We also have the Samus menu. The Samus menu is a little sparse at the moment. We have no supply, no beam, no suit, no misc, and no boots. This is kind of a weak suit of armor. I don't know why Samus is missing all of her gear from the past two games at this point, although that's a meme. At least some other games give a reason for it. This time she just didn't have it on. So let's start looking around a little bit. Okay, can't go there. Can't go there. But we can go here. Bricks we can't break. We can't even turn into a ball yet. Our, like, most known ability. All we can do is just keep running down and down and trying to find more and more progress. We can't even get in here. But we can open that door. Blue doors! It can just be opened with a regular shot. Red doors need something more. Although the starting blue door taunts us with another crouching section, so really, not much we can do to start. The game is clearly funneling us down towards something. And that is the escape sequence from the original game. This whole pattern here is actually what you have to do to climb out after you beat the first game, after you defeat Mother Brain. And the reason for that is that we start in the room that we killed Mother Brain in. This is a nice throwback to the fact that Sam has kind of already messed up this planet completely. We already did our job here who knows how many years ago at this point. But obviously something's still wrong. Taking the elevator down here, we are now in the starting area of Metroid 1, which means if you know the game, go to the left and you'll be rewarded with an orb. And the first of many jingles we'll be hearing in this playthrough for the Morphing Ball. Not the Morph Ball, the Morphing Ball. It even says it in the menu. It's so weird. Also, it doesn't tell you what it does, but if you've read the manual or if you've played another Metroid game, you know, tapping down twice turns you into a ball. It's such a well-done ability that this camera is just putting a spotlight on us and just enjoying the show. Spotlight doesn't do any damage, but it just does show you that something's going on here. Now we can duck down and get into a bunch of tunnels. So now we have some options, but there's a couple more doors we can explore too. Another red door we can't open or pink, depending on how you feel about the color. But this one we can go through and get a reward. Missiles! Now we have our first ability. Press your item select button to have missiles armed. You have five total to start with. Every item pickup you get for missiles will give you five new ones. But don't go fire them right away because you need five open up a red door. 
Thankfully, once you've opened that door, it's unlocked and turned into blue. So you can just run to the end here and get some more missiles. But we've also got another camera watching us, too. Now, at this point in the game, in Metroid 1, this would lead to a new path. And this actually answers a question I was always confused about as a kid. Because right here... Off by one. Right here is an energy tank. And I always wondered, why was there one right here in the ceiling that you couldn't reach? Or why was it there at all? Why would you think to check that? Turns out, that's just where it was in Metroid 1. There's a... It's not quite the same. It's off by a couple spaces, but it is otherwise just a reference to Metroid 1. And I never got that as a kid, because I didn't play Metroid 1 until I was, like, at a university. Like, well, Metroid 1 in full, the original NES one. I played through Zero Mission. But yeah, no, uh, I just never really pieced that together. So we've done all we can down here for now. Let's just leave and go back through the nice, quiet area. That's not quiet anymore! The space pirates are here! Ready to mess up Samus with their brain beams. At least that's what it looks like. I know they're eye beams. Here, let's just let them fire. They're eye beams that come out of their claw and everything, too. I like to think that they're brain beams. Because it's more satisfying when you blow them up. But now that they're here... Uh, the climb upwards is actually going to be active as well, and all enemies will be around the room. And all the rooms that we've gone through so far. But I'm actually going to double back here for a second. That energy tank we showed off. This is one of the speedrunning tricks I've been trying to learn, and I'm probably going to goof this up. If I do it wrong, I'll just show you a video of the correct way to do it. Uh, you can actually get this way early. Now, when we played through this game for the Runaway Guys, we actually taught Emil about bomb jumping which was a technique to basically get as high as you want while in morph ball form by just dropping bombs and juggling yourself with it. But it turns out there's actually a much easier way of doing this, and it's called damage boosting, and I am very bad at it. Yep, that would have actually worked. If you can get this guy in the right spot, and sometimes he just chooses not to, you can damage boost up into it. You don't need high jump boots, you don't need bomb jumping, nothing. It's way easier. It takes a couple tries, and as you can see, I almost ran out of health, so we were pushing our luck a little bit. Thankfully, with full health, we can now do that. There is an easier strategy, but it is a little bit slower as well. This guy here, I think this is a Gamer, I think is the name of the enemy? Uh, he can also, if you're patient enough, get all the way over there. Shoot the right spot. I missed it. And you can just have... You can damage boost into it. But of course, I missed it. And it wasn't there anyways, but whatever. So here's the way to do it correctly. Stand below the E-Tank. Shoot it to make it appear. And then jump to hit the Gamer right before it's about to touch the E-Tank. And you should get boosted into it. Make sure to jump straight up and not a spin jump. Because spin jumps lower your height. Meaning you will miss the Gamer. And with that... We've got our first proper item. We've got one early energy tank that we didn't need to get yet. There's more items in this area as well. If you notice on your map, there's little dots. These are markers to show areas of interest, usually where items are. But it is not a guarantee. It, can, it might not be an item. It may be something else. But usually if you see a dot and you've not been there yet, you should go there. Well, we already unlocked this door, so we don't have to worry about shooting these guys, but we've already done all that as is. Now the upward climb begins again. Metroid 1 ends with this room. Metroid 3 starts with it. Do the climb. Fight these easy early pirates. Ooh, they will knock you around. Be careful. But they will drop pickups. This... These... This is health! I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, the big orbs are 20 health. The little ones are 5. However, they're not going to drop any health when you don't need any. Any items you don't need, they don't drop. So if you're max on everything, they drop nothing. They can drop missiles. They can drop health, big and small. They can drop all the other items you'll get as well. It's up to you what you want to do. Let's... Uh, yeah, we already checked this door, so let's start here then. Because now we can turn into a ball, but we get trolled yet again. Can't do that room just yet. So let's try the room on the right. Five to open it. 
run through, shoot a little bunch of baddies. Open the door and we'll get to a very important room. If it's your, especially if it's your first time through the map room. We now have a number of map zones displayed. Not all maps have been displayed and you can tell that because there are some rooms that are not connected to anything. There are still hidden rooms you can find around the area. And at this point, I've played this game enough that I've got them memorized and I'll show them off. But you at least have a good starting point. So we've got a bunch of dots we can go towards. So let's let's work towards that. Okay, we can't go left. Not yet. We can go in here. So let's go see what's in here, which is pretty obvious. It's a big letter S, which means Superman is in here. I knew it. At least his tube. This is Superman's tube bed, better known as a save tube. It's how you save your game. Metroid's not a short game, if, especially if you don't know what you're doing. It can be if you know what you're doing, but if it's your first time through, it will take a bit. So you're going to want to use them save tubes. So can't do anything about that wall yet. But now we do have this little path down here we can check. This room that we now no longer can escape from properly anyways. So let's see what our prize is for looking around. Needing to use more missiles, that's our prize. Hey, it's a Chozo statue. With an orb. It's bombs! Turn it into a ball and set it with the Y button. One of the few things I actually give you instructions for. Now we can duck down and drop bombs, but the door closed behind us. That's weird. Hello? I'd like to leave? Uh oh. All right, we have to fight the statue itself. It's come to life. It will vomit out eggs. The eggs will give you items if you shoot them. Pump it full of missiles or shots. I believe it has 300 hit points total. I might have actually a little bit more than that. I think each missile does 20 damage to it. Actual numbers will be on screen for you. Shoot it down. It's not that hard as long as you're pumping it full of bullets and missiles and you're done. That boss, one of the biggest speedrunning tricks, is skipping that boss. However, it cannot be done in North American versions of the game. Apparently, it can only be done in PAL versions of the game. And even then, kind of barely. So it's very fascinating seeing the little differences even different versions of this game have. But it's really cool just skipping that fight, even if it is just a very easy fight. All right, now that we have bombs, we have a bunch of options we can do here now. We already know there's a room down there as a ball we can go check. But uh, let's see if there's anything else we can do over here just yet. Oh, we can. Oh, we can do it. We can dig through it. Digging right through. There we go. And we got a green door. Missiles do nothing to it. We're stuck, but we can at least jump up around here now. So let's explore around here a little bit. Obviously running and jumping gets you a little bit more height. We got a hill. And that's kind of it, actually. Bunch of rocks up there. Lots of acid rain. And our ship. Pop in your ship by pressing down in the center portion. And you'll fully heal and get all your weapons recharged. So that's why I pumped out all those missiles into the green door. We're not equipped for green doors just yet. But we're going to work on that right now. Nothing else we can really do at the moment. There's only one place we can go, which is why we're going to ignore it. What we can do, actually, is we can go that way. That's the actual way to go. But let's go get the, the, that little tube we ignored earlier. The one that we couldn't do until we got bombs. Because now with bombs, we can blow up soft blocks. Certain ones, anyways. Other soft blocks are apparently not soft, and you can't destroy them. But our prize for that is more missiles. Uh, 
Not a bad prize. We'll take what we can get. Now, we can either just bomb our way back through there, or pop up with a little bit of a bomb jump there. Like, the level one bomb jump is simply just drop a bomb and it'll bounce you upwards. And just take the little shortcut there. Bomb jumping like that is going to be incredibly useful if you've never played a Metroid game before. And I know it's playing Metroid 3, Super Metroid, and being like, if you've never played a Metroid game before to one of the most popular Metroid games does feel a bit patronizing, I guess. But at the same time, Dread is coming out. I feel like a lot of people are going to try this series out for the first time. And it's funny because at this point, so many people are familiar with the term Metroidvania. And we've shown off the Vania side of that before because of the uh, Castlevania Ari of Sorrow, but never really did a full playthrough of a Metro here, so here you go. Space Pirates! One missile will kill them. Your standard shot, though, they can block. So be very wary of that. Just give them a little... Pump them full of missiles. And we can also just... Pop this door open here. What's over here? It's red, so it must be important. Spooky tunnel. And at the end of the tunnel, we have a weird giant statue, some haunting music, four glowing eyes that we can't seem to destroy. We're gonna have to remember this room for later. It must have some meaning that I don't understand, despite the fact that Ridley was definitely there, kind of giving away what the statue means. can't destroy you. We can shoot you and get a bunch of little extra drops. So let's... I feel bad I just got all health when I needed missiles. There we go. There's some missile drops. Let me just skip over this as well. Just really want to get my missiles topped up because we're going to need them for a second here because after this elevator ride here, we'll be leaving Criteria. And entering Brinstar. Welcome to Brinstar, nice green luscious zone, which we've actually already been in, the starting area for Metroid 1, where we got Morph Ball, sorry, Morphing Ball, uh, was actually also Brinstar. This Brinstar is a little bit different than the one you were actually used to because of Metroid 1, though. Full of life and bugs, and some tough enemies to destroy. We've got a lot of red doors we can open. I'm gonna open this one first. because there's another save room. And now we're gonna sequence break a little bit. Actually, uh, if I can get a couple more missiles. Oh, you know what, no. It, there's an easy way to get a couple missiles. In this room right here, we have a respawning enemy tube. Just shoot them. They're usually one-shot enemies and they will give you health or missiles to recharge. So there we go, we got a couple extra missiles. Plus, if we walk over here, a missile tank. But we also do have an area we can't seem to get to. Bombs let us in here. But there's a lot of doors we can't seem to open. We seem kind of stuck. So let's try going up here and running. Not fast enough, can't get in there. So this is where one of the speed running tricks I learned actually comes in, and I this trick is really cool, but it took me a while to get used to it. This is called Mock Ball. I'm gonna try this first to see if I can do this correctly, because I haven't quite got it down pat, but if we do it correctly, we should fly in and have a fast morph ball that can get us through there no problem and be able to avoid all those pillars. Now doing that is a sequence break. We're not supposed to do that for a long time. We need a specific item to come back there called the speed booster. It just lets you run through that really fast. Doing the mock ball trick gives you enough speed and lowers your sprites profile enough that you can just slip through there. This is one of the unintended speed running tricks that people found. It's actually really neat, and it gets us a bunch of items early. First off, we've got a reserve tank. Next up, 
more missiles. And a very sneaky extra missile pack. We got 24 missiles that we have in our inventory right now. I think that we have 40, 35, something like that. Uh, but we also now have this reserve tank here over in our supply area there. Notice that we have one rectangle out of four there. We now have the ability to overheal and store extra energy that we can tap at any time. Plus, notice that our miscellane miscellaneous, miscellaneous area now has Morphing Ball and Bomb there. So we have two of our four miscellaneous items already. So we're doing pretty good. We shouldn't have this already. Don't worry about getting this early. You will eventually come back here naturally and come get this. But I just like to do this early because it op opens up a bunch of different things here. I've also used some tricks that I have not really talked about just yet, and I've kind of intentionally been not doing, such as wall jumping. We'll talk about that when it becomes a little bit easier to show off because the camera pans a bit weird in this zone. But we're getting an item early that we shouldn't have normally, the super missile. You are not supposed to have this yet, but it is very helpful to get this early. Okay. Let's talk about a couple things first. How about we talk about Mock Ball first? Now, first off, I learned how to do a Mock Ball by watching Cot Power's tutorial on how to do it, which is also linked on the Super Metroid Speedrun Wiki. Both of these resources were super helpful for me learning it, so if you don't feel I'm explaining it very well, check those out. There should be a link in the top right and in the description below. First and foremost, you can do this anywhere in the game. It's just the most helpful in this green Brin Star room. If you want to practice it, the pathway to that statue we showed earlier is actually a really good area to do it. Take a couple running steps forward while holding the run button. Then when you're ready, jump. Now while you're jumping, you can let go of the run button, but make sure you have the jump button held down the entire time you are doing this. When you get to the right position you want to be in, let go of the D-pad and then tap down once. Samus should stop spinning at that point. After that, Wait until you're about to touch the ground, then hold down and forward. So do either diagonal down right or down left. If you've done this right, Samus will not bounce when she touches the ground, turn to a morph ball and just keep zipping forward. Again, make sure you're holding the jump button this entire time. If Samus bounces as a morph ball when she hits the ground, you did it too early. It's the bounce on the ground that resets the speed. There's also another version of the Mock Ball where you can let go of the jump button to adjust your jump height, but for what we're using it for for this run through, that move is not going to be necessary. It's also much more difficult to get used to the timing of, so if you're learning it for the first time, stick with holding down the jump button the entire time. Alright, and with that, let's hop over here to this red door. Five regular missiles to open up a red door, or if you're feeling saucy, one super missile. Speeds it up, and as you notice, knocks over any enemies that are hanging off of walls or ceilings. Just be a little careful, because supers are a bit more in demand than regular missiles. Supers, I believe, have triple the attack power of a regular missile. Which makes them much more valuable, but you also get a lot less in the grand scheme of the game. All this for another map room. Here is a lot of Brinstar, and it tells us areas we can get to now. There are three different entries to Criteria. There's a Meridia entrance, and there's a Norfair entrance. And an interesting icon over there. I think that might be a boss. We might have to go over and see if we can deal with that. But notice there are a lot of rooms with a lot of dots. We're not going to be able to do everything right now, but we're going to see if we can do as much as we can. The general path I'm going to take through the game is the one that I've kind of gotten used to and prefer. It is not what the game intends, and like I said before, I'll show you how and when you're supposed to do certain ones before. So if I haven't mentioned anything, like, I don't think I've actually shown the the right way to get through that mock ball room yet, we'll show you when the time comes. So if I haven't mentioned it, don't sweat it, it'll happen. Down here, we've got two options. We've got the door on the left, the door on the right, and secretly, 
We have a third option, an icon we don't know yet, but the bomb wouldn't break it. Bombs can be used to display and show what item is needed to destroy certain blocks to get you through places. Now, at this point, I've played through the game enough that I generally know what is needed. And eventually you get an item, or two items essentially, that make things a lot easier to tell what's where. But at this point, for me, it's just practice and it just kind of comes with that. They do not expect you to get 100% your first playthrough of the game, and it really shows. We found a missile reload room. We have 30 missiles total at the moment. Missile recharge rooms do not recharge your super missiles. That is incredibly important to know because it's very disappointing. Also, shooting these guys, as easy as they are to destroy, makes the room dimmer and dimmer to a point where you can't see the spikes and platforms are on, so be very careful. We have to go this way here. Through here, we find another wall, and the only way we can destroy it, of course, is with regular bombs. Dig your way through. Keep running. Avoid more enemies. And now we've got a gigantic room we can check out here now. We have two ways to go, up and down. Up looks like it goes to a finite ending path, which in fact it does. But let's do the bottom path here first, because we've got a couple interesting things of note. First off, a yellow door, which we definitely cannot open at the moment. Or at least, you might not think that. We have super missiles early, so we can try it, but at this point, you wouldn't have them, so you would think that wouldn't work. Next up, we've got a door we can't seem to access just yet. Another tube to reload our weaponry and health on. And we got a little pedestal with some missiles here. Plus, some oddly colored ground. Super Metroid was the first Metroidvania that kind of taught me, hey, if something looks off, check it, because it probably is off for a reason. Because they like to hide things. Like the charge beam. Our first major blaster upgrade. The charge beam does what it says on the tin. We can charge our shot now. A much more powerful shot. Takes a bit to charge though, but it's very helpful. We can also, since this looks off, bomb it, but again, not a weapon we can do yet. One thing that the charge beam lets you do now, which the game doesn't really tell you, I think it shows you in like the little tutorial videos. Actually, two things. One is the pseudo shine, or, sorry, pseudo screw attack, which lets you put your charge into your spin jump and does 200 damage. So if an enemy is weak enough, it will actually destroy them. But you have to be doing a spin jump to actually have to work. The other, is what's called, I, I don't know what it's called actually, I think it's just bomb spamming. Really, it just throws five bombs out at once. The, the actual name of the technique is gonna be on screen. But one thing I was never aware of as a kid, I only started found this out when I started practicing for this, holding the down button and keeping it held down increases the range and height of where the bombs will bounce and where they'll go. I thought originally they just, you tap it, that's all they do. No, they actually, have a variable amount of space and bounce they can do, depending on how long you hold the down arrow. It's neat. We're also gonna do something else here first. We're going to try to skip a boss fight and get early super missiles again. This can only be done because we did mock ball. Notice this super missile marker here. Standing here to shoot it doesn't work. The missile goes off screen and dismisses the target. But if you pan the camera left for a while and then go as far back right as you can until it locks in place and then stand somewhere, I think, around here. For some reason, that block becomes solid. So then you can break it and go through. Now this is what's effectively known as Spore Spawn Skip. And I like to do it because I fucking hate Spore Spawn. <laughs> spore Spawn is like, is a mid-boss. It's not a hard boss, but it's just kind of a Boring boss? Not really a fan of them. But this is where you're supposed to get super missiles originally. This is the first location of them. If you go up there, or you actually you fall down from there, you'll be stuck in here. So we have the loop back. And this is where the game also naturally teaches you about green doors. As you might have seen that it closed on us earlier. Green doors, as you pretty much surmised, super missile doors. Oh, 
damage carry through. Oops. Now, I would be quite content to just skip Spore Spawn completely, but I did say 100% playthrough, so unfortunately I'm going to go fight him proper. So let's go do that now, because he's actually at the top of the room. But we could have ignored that completely. We got early Super Missiles. We could have just gone through where we got Charge Beam, gone to the right of that, and actually just moved on. But I'm also going to show this off. It's time to show off wall jumping. This is one of the techniques the game does teach you eventually. And it breaks the game wide open. And it's my favorite thing about Super Metroid and the Metroids in general. Go towards a wall and start a spin. When you touch the wall, tap away from it and the jump button to do a wall jump. Wall jumping lets you get things a lot earlier than you should. It's a really fun technique to do once you get used to it. It's just really satisfying to do. And honestly, it's probably the main reason I come back to Metroid so many times. is because stuff like this is just so fun to do. You're actually supposed to use these blocks up here with an item we'll get later. And we'll show that off later uh, to get that. So if you're playing along for the first time, don't worry about that. You'll get that missile pack later. Let's go up to where you're actually supposed to go. All the way up here. No, no, no. Get out of here. Now, we got two options. One, check the corner. You know, it seems out of place. Door to another save tube. Use it if you need it. Go back through here. Break this back. So let's go fight Spore Spawn, unfortunately. <laughs> I will do this fight normally. I will turn off super missiles, but super missiles speed up the fight considerably. Just keep that in mind. The strategy is more or less the same though, so maybe I will actually use at least one. Say hello to Spore Spawn. The little spores that fly down, you can just shoot to get item drops, but we're at max capacity for everything but super missiles because we're not supposed to have them yet. Uh, so we don't need to worry. Spore Spawn just moves back and forth in a figure eight motion. And then it opens itself up. Regular shots will not work, but charge shots will. They take double damage from charge shots, but you can usually pump them full of missiles faster. There's a couple safe spots. You can sit like right here in your morph ball form and just hit him with a couple missiles. That's the strategy. Eventually, the spore spawn just gets faster and faster. Just shoot the spores for health and missiles and ammunition if you think you're running out. You really don't need to worry that much. This fight is not that threatening. But let's let's uh, let's speed it up a little bit, huh? There you go. Since a super missile is the equivalent of basically three regular missiles, it uh, it pisses him off a lot more. He gets a lot faster because of it. Ooh, you're gonna be ah, oh, damn it! I thought I had to set up for two. That almost worked. One more super missile will end it. This fight takes a lot longer normally, and it's really just not that interesting of a fight, but it is also meant to be your first proper boss fight. So it's a tutorial. That's that's basically what it is. Don't sweat it going through your first time through. It's not that bad. The worst part about it, literally, is the music. Just drains on you. And a fun little animation thing. Uh, if you wall jump off of Spore Spawn... Hang on. It shakes. As if it's not supposed to be doing that. Like, they don't expect you to do that, which is just a nice little Easter egg. Jump up there. I'm going to be... Now that I've talked to you about wall jumps, I'm going to be doing wall jumps a lot more. I basically held back for the first little bit. Kip, skipped a couple areas that we could normally do with it. Uh, And I noticed that this tube doesn't seem to have any uh, enemies coming out of it. So jump out of it. Fall down. And this is where we would have actually gotten Super Missiles for the first time. You've already seen this part already, so I'm just gonna quickly run ahead and get us to where we actually need to be. Well, actually, I don't really think I need to cut, per se, here, because we've already seen all these doors, and it's just one room down. Get right here. Do a little bomb jump. Push yourself through. And you can continue. Now, looking around here, 
We've got an orange door up there, or yellow, whatever color you want to call it, but we can't reach it. Wall jumping will sort of let us do it if we're patient enough, but we can't open the door yet, so it's kind of pointless. So let's just keep moving on here. Oh, hey, that seems weird. How come you can see the background and the back of the tube on that one, but not the others? This is another one we can get early because of wall jumps. Wall jumping will let you get up there, roll in for early missiles. You were supposed to come back here with another item to get that one. There's actually two different items I think that'll help you get that. We basically just skipped ahead on that one. Again, we'll show that when we get to it. A lot of a lot of Brinstar stuff you can get early with these different techniques as you've seen. And like I said earlier, you don't need to do wall jumps. The game teaches you, and if you go for 100%, you need to do it because they actually hide items in the wall jump tutorial area. But if you're just playing a casual playthrough, you're more than likely not going to get to that area, and you're more than likely not gonna know about wall jumping. It's not a big deal. Just be cool with it. And But it is, like I said, one of my favorite mechanics in the game. I love it so much. Welcome to the Red Tower. As you can see, we can go back up to get to Great Tyria, but uh, we can't make that jump yet. You can with wall jumps, obviously, but that's not intended. If we get up here with wall jumps, we have a lot of things we need to dodge. But we also have some problems because that wall can break, but it can also heal itself because we have to dodge these four guys and get up there before the, it reheals itself. So let's not worry about that for now. That's not a that's not a break I usually do. Although, it, you do get something extremely helpful if you do, and you get it really early, too. Let's deal with this guy here. This grasshopper will stick to you like glue. So what you need to do... Bomb the hell out of him. It's the only way to get rid of him. Shoot the ground to get going, and drop all the way down... for more health! In case you took too much damage. There's a full heal. Energy heals also do recharge your reserve tank, I believe. I... actually, I hesitate that. I believe they do, but I will show on screen if I'm wrong on that. Now we have water. Water has uh, a big effect on Samus. She moves extremely slow during it, so... Don't go in the water just yet. You can still shoot at your proper speed, it's just your movement and your jump completely hindered. Actually, I want to check something. Okay, yeah. So notice this dot room here by itself that's not connected? This room is actually a big room for me. This is the room that taught me wall jumps and also got me into Metro in the first place. This room here, we can see it up there, so that's how we get to the dot room. But over here, one square is off color. If we try to jump up here, though, we can't get it yet. My cousin taught me about this room in the first place, and this is what got me into Super Metroid. Because he showed me wall jumping to get up here. But it's not the intended way to get up there originally. You get an item very soon, actually, that gets you up there properly. You hop up here, get ready for the fake block there. They trick you with that. Wait for it to heal. Go in, and we're going to get another early weapon upgrade. The Spazer. The Spazer gives us a spread shot. We've got a three-wide beam shot now that we can fire. Also, now if we go over to the Samus menu, we can turn these on and off. So if for some reason you don't want Charge Beam on or you don't want Spazer on, you can switch them on or off at your leisure. Same with Morph Ball and Bomb, but... It's a case of, why would you do that? The the applications for it are very small, but they, they do exist. So that little room there and learning that little trick, that is the whole reason I got into wall jumping and the whole reason I kind of fell in love with Metroid was just little like, oh, that's like a different way of getting it. That's neat. I can't believe there's so many options. What other options are there to get things? It's so cool. We've got this long tunnel here. 
It's connected to this room. But elevator rooms don't have anything in them, do they? Oops, yes they do. But they need super missiles. And we've got them, but let's actually go the correct way for once. No, no skipping ahead for once. Let's actually do this proper. What the game actually wants you to do is go to Norfair. Welcome to the Spice Zone. Upper Norfair has a bunch of different doors. We've got a green one here. And again, these things shut down on us. So guess what? We can't do it yet normally, but if we want to, Mockball works yet again. Mockball lets you, I got that way faster, holy cow. Mockball lets you zip through here. And you can do, uh, you can get an item early. However, spicy rooms drain your health. So, I'll be nice. I'm not gonna skip that far ahead. We'll get that one later when we're, uh, well, when we're supposed to. But now, how do we get out of here? We kinda, we kinda screwed ourselves over here a little bit. We actually now have to bomb this part up here by like morph balling and jumping at the same time to drop a bomb. Or, I think this will work. If we do the bomb spread and hold it to maximum, that will also blow it up for us. That way we don't need to do any tricky bomb jumps. We can just take this casual ride through here. Just jam through. Let's see what other doors we have options for. Let's check the one on the right. Another spicy room, get out of here. Can't do anything about the spice just yet. An orange door we can't open. Sorry, a yellow door rather we can't open yet. A blue door we can. Leads to yet another save room. Let's pass the save room. Not spicy. Oh, but a bunch of you guys. Nope, 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 nope. Oh, and a new icon we haven't seen yet. An arrow. We can't touch that yeah, just yet. We got a ways to go. Check what's over here on the right through the red missile door. And it's an E-Tank. Keep in mind at this point, we're one extra E-Tank from what we should actually have. So it's really a good thing that we found one of these. And then the ground crumbles. The door's locked, so we need to kill that enemy that just ran through here. They're running away pretty fast. But notice that they also showed off there's something up here, but you can't reach it normally. If you can wall jump, you can do it, but let's pretend we're not doing that right now. Because we got a new item here instead. This is a very important item to start you with. The high jump boots. This was the item you needed to actually get the spacer properly. Because now you can just leap up there correctly. Because you can jump way higher right now. The difference in your jump is very noticeable. Can't quite get out there no off normally. Obviously, again, wall jumping works. But, I mean, the game gives you the item to jump higher. Just use it. Just use it properly. And actually, have some fun with it. We have to kill that enemy here, though, to get through this door. Let's just wait for him to come down. Sleep up normally. Get more free missiles. Doors unlocked, we can run through, and we didn't actually test it out, but this is the item we needed to get through that door back up there, because there's nothing else we can really do here. Well, I say nothing else, but there is one last thing we can check, and that is another door to another spicy room that we cannot open because we have to shoot that little tag there with green, so super missile. But it's on the other side, which we can't do anything about, so back up we go. We've exhausted every option we currently can do without just draining our health like crazy. So let's go deal with that super missile door that we shot earlier. We're actually gonna break all three here. So these monster head doors, these are symbolic for Metroid 1 and they usually meant you were going to a boss layer. High jump is how you get in here naturally, but 
And of course, you don't need high jump to get in here. You really don't need high jump for anything if you're good. Well, this actually isn't even a wall jump situation. This is actually just a tap the jump button. Well, and you can wall jump off the ledge if you really want to, but you can actually line yourself up in a way that you will make that jump naturally or just wall jump off the edge if you're really good at wall jumping. I can never actually get the timing down to do this without needing to wall jump. Oh, there we go. As soon as I said it. Let's turn those boots back on. We found our first proper boss layer. Fight our way through here. We got a bunch of little paths we can do break down, but we've also got doors that are locked that we can't seem to break. This is an interesting situation because there are no enemies left in this room to kill to open that. We actually do need to kill the big bat of the area. So let's just shoot you guys up here. You don't actually need to shoot you if you don't want. Here we got a little dip. Let's break that on purpose. And this leads us to another save room. We might as well take this. Break this down, but this wasn't the way to go, unfortunately. What we need to do is actually, this big break here is collapsible completely. However, before we go, I want to show this off. Uh, this spot here, if I can do this right, this might be tricky with high jump boots. I actually might need to turn these off, because I think this will make it easier for me. All these randos I've been doing have got me more used to just doing non-high jump jumps like this. If you can get your bomb form up there. Okay, come on. There we go. You'll notice there's a power bomb icon again. So there's an item here. It's actually on that little glowing space over there. But we're not going to be getting power bombs for a little bit. So we just have to remember that that's there. Turn my boots back on. And let's go find some space pirates. Spacer actually gives enough piercing power that you can actually damage the blocking space pirates now. Now we've got something just shooting a bunch of uh, little missiles at us. This is Kraid. Kraid from Metroid 1 is back. The tiny boy himself is very easy to defeat. But that's weird. He wasn't in the boss room. Funny that he looks exactly like Kraid 1, yet somehow there's still more to go. Item, uh, an enemy spawner there. Uh, ooh, a corpse to worry about there. That looks a lot like our armor, but a little bit better and a little orange. And we got this eyeball. Yeah, we'll shoot little rocks at you. You can shoot, hit in the eye with a regular missile. You gotta do it three times or just one super missile. But before we hop in there, if you're running low on health, you might think, oh, just use the spawner here to get stuff. There's actually a secret up here. Blow this open to get both a missile recharge and a health recharge station. Unfortunately, this is one of the ones they don't show you on the map, so it's kind of a bummer that they don't, if it's your first time through, but it is helpful. 50 regular missiles, 10 super missiles, nine right now, three energy tanks, and one reserve tank, and we are going to go fight a boss. Now, I'm going to attempt a quick kill on this. If I do this wrong, whatever, I'll just splice it in later, but, Say hello to Kraid, the true Kraid. He's much bigger than the little tiny boy we saw in Metroid 1 and in that room earlier. Oh, way too early, dude. Oh, I fucked that up completely. Oh, man, I jumped. I did it way wrong. All right, real fight then. Real fight of Kraid. Kraid takes up two rooms, two sides of rooms. You need to wait for him to roar and open his mouth properly at least once. And now, anytime you shoot him in the eyes, he will open his mouth and you can actually uh, fight him proper now. So let's shoot you in the eyes. And pump you full of super missiles. Four super missiles in the mouth and the fight. He has a thousand hit points total. Super missiles do 300 each. As long as you're not being overwhelmed by his projectiles, which you can shoot down easily, you can get through no problem. Now, that's how you fight him normally. Here's how you do it, if you want to do it fast. Kraid's head has two weird properties to it. The first is, if you use a charge shot on his eyes instead of a regular shot or a missile, 
it'll actually keep his hand from moving so his mouth is more exposed. The second is that his face has five different sprites of animation. If you can hit him in the second part of his animation, right before his mouth is fully opened, it'll actually lock his mouth into place long enough for you to pump him full of super missiles to get the kill. Quick killing Kraid, though, breaks the camera, so you actually have to kind of blindly find your way to the other side of the room and open the door to actually move on. The timing can be a little weird, though, so a runner named White Mage Becky came up with a move where you twist around twice, then shoot in between the charge shot on the missiles, which is now known as the Becky Twist. The game also lags a lot as Kraid is coming up from the ground, so trying to minimize what you're doing as much as possible can help reduce the lag on that and make him rise faster. All right, with the fast fight done, let's just hop in here and get a very important item. An orb! The Varia suit! At least I'm pretty sure that's how it's pronounced. I hope it's not Varia, because I believe it is supposed to sound like variable, which would be Varia, but I've always said Varia. The Varia suit gives us sick shoulder pads, turns us orange and makes us heat resistant. So now those spicy rooms aren't so spicy. I love the little bit of environmental storytelling here about this body having the exact same kind of form that this suit has and in the same color too, implying that the Varia suit was actually ripped off of this dead corpse and just hidden behind Kraid as a security measure. I think that's actually super neat. Here, just one super missile kills him and he drops a ton of super missiles, so it's a good way to restock. One regular missile kills these guys. Just easy peasy. All right, so this is pretty much gonna do it for this episode. I'm gonna go down to Spicy Town and I'm gonna go actually take the save point there. But now that we've killed Kraid, this door is unlocked. And we meet and greet some more uh, grasshoppers again. Bomb them up, get rid of them, reopen the door and shoot here to get yet another energy tank. Enjoy it. Each energy tank, I guess I realize I never even mentioned this, each energy tank is technically a hundred health points. Technically it's 99, but let's be real, it's a it's hundred. Uh, so now we've got 499 as our max health. Plus the reserve tank we have, so technically we have 599. There's so much more Super Metroid to go. I'm so pumped for this to actually play through this proper. Even though it does feel like I'm going slow, we are gonna try to get the best ending. We might be cutting it close based on the way I'm doing this. But hopefully you guys are enjoying the ride. Next episode, we're gonna deal with all of Norfair, at least all that we can reach. And uh, we'll do some things out of order here again. Plus, we'll actually learn the correct way to be doing wall jumps and a bunch of other tricks. See you guys next time. One other thing Super Metroid does that's actually kind of clever is that it has a couple different reels of demos at the beginning, which are also actually secretly hints for where to find other items and to do certain techniques you might not think to try otherwise. At the end of each episode, I'm gonna show off each of the reels so you can kind of get a hint for where things are. Like this looks a lot like where we found or where our ship landed. Very familiar to that. This looks like an area we haven't gotten to just yet, but it uses an item that will be very handy later and we kind of talked about earlier. This is showing off the bomb jumping technique. One of the cooler things that are in Metroid games and how detailed and how high you can go is actually really cool. This shows off a special beam charge ability, which we cannot do just yet, but we will deal with when we actually get there. And last but not least, a mysterious technique that the game never teaches you about otherwise and doesn't tell you how to do. See y'all next time. <laughs>